In the workshop, a modified Southworth Engines 12-inch boiler feed pump built by Don English, Part 9. To start off this episode, I'm making the pipe that takes steam from the boiler and feeds it to the engine. I use my medium pipe bender that I bought from Blackgates Engineering about 30 years ago, and then I silver soldered on two union cones, not forgetting to put the nuts on the pipe first. Time now for a steam test. The Castle V6 is all ready. I've lit the fire, even though it is only a very small gas burner in there. It's best to use gas for a steam test because if I get any problems, I can just turn the gas off. Especially as, at the moment, the hand pump isn't connected to the boiler. It amazes me how efficient this 6-inch diameter boiler is. In no time at all, the water's starting to boil. The first thing to do, though, is to drain some of the water out of the boiler, so that if the pump works, it can pump some water back into the boiler. When I open the steam tap, water comes out first, that's what was in the pipe, followed by steam. And immediately, I'm opening the wet steam valve to allow some steam to the engine cylinder to warm it up. While I'm waiting for the pressure to build, I'm spending some time lubricating all of the moving parts. I've piped away the exhaust from the engine so it doesn't go all over the bench. But there is a slight problem as you can hear. The design of these type of pumps is very clever. You can see the main steam cylinder that does all the work. In this large block, which looks like a steam chest but isn't just a steam chest, there are two more cylinders. And in this pair of cylinders is a thing called a shuttle piston. Here it is and as you can see, it's sticking at one end of the travel. This is using compressed air, and as the engine cools down, the shuttle piston doesn't stick quite so much. It's still sticking a little bit, but when I replace the cover, it runs perfectly. But this is on compressed air. The mechanism only fails when it gets hot, so something's amiss somewhere. The boiler's water level was getting quite low from the last run, so I temporarily piped the water from the pump to the boiler feed clack and ran the engine so it filled the boiler. Then I relit the burner to raise some more steam, just to see whether the shuttle piston was going to stick a second time. All I'd really done was move it back and forth inside the cylinder. When I open the steam valve, the pump appears to work. But it only goes about as far as this. It goes to one end of its travel and just stays there, it doesn't come back the other way. So the shuttle piston is still stuck. I turned off the gas and let the engine cool. And once again, I removed the end cover. And after removing this cover for the second time, it's no surprise to me to find that the shuttle piston is at this end of its travel. When I press it with a screwdriver, the shuttle piston sticks and then it moves. And the engine's still fairly warm at the moment, but it's not really the temperature of very hot steam. I know a fair bit about this type of pump, because a friend of mine a few years ago used to make them for me on a regular basis. They were beautifully engineered and I used to sell them for him. They worked fine on compressed air, but they never worked so well on steam to start with. And the problem was, guess what, the shuttle piston. In this clip, you can see the shuttle piston on the right-hand side inside the steam chest. The shuttle piston operates one valve, and the main valve rod operates the other. And this is definitely feeling a little bit sticky. So it's time to investigate further. I don't have to fully dismantle the engine. All I need to do is lift up the steam chest, and use the brass block that I've just shown to keep it there so I can extract the shuttle piston. I'm using a small screwdriver to push the shuttle piston out of the two cylinders. You notice there's one at each end of the steam chest. And that's why these pumps are self-starting. The main cylinder's double acting and so is the shuttle piston. This shuttle piston is made out of brass, which is not a good idea if it was just going to be brass against the gunmetal but you will notice that there were o-rings fitted at each end, so really the brass part of the shuttle piston doesn't really need to touch the sides, as all the sealing is done by the o-ring. I don't really like the idea of a brass shuttle piston, I think a stainless steel one would be better, and this one doesn't look to be very accurate. And this has nothing to do whatsoever with Don's machining abilities, I just think it's got bent in service. In any case, I'm really quite glad that it didn't work, because it will allow me to make a video about the internal workings of a steam pump like this. To compensate for the possibility that the shuttle piston is bent, I've used some wet or dry sandpaper and some Scotch-Brite on the piston itself, and also I've made the groove deeper for the o-ring, so there's a bit more float. I think it's time to flood the entire assembly with oil and put it back together. It's very cold in the workshop today. Normally I have a central heating radiator in the workshop, but it's broken. When the boiler was in steam on the bench, it was tolerable, but now it's really cold. And as you can see here, there doesn't seem to be any problems with this shuttle piston. 
I'm going to apply a copious amount of oil around the shuttle piston to make sure it's well lubricated. Here's a good tip, when you're using ordinary paint like Humbrol enamel on steam engine components that get very hot, do not touch the paint when it's hot, at least for the first few steamings until it's had time to bake on. Otherwise the paint will be badly marked and you'll have to remove it and start again. While I was working on the shuttle piston as you've just seen, soaking the steam chest in some cellulose thinners soon removed the paint. After checking the tightness of the bolts holding the steam chest cover in place, it's time to fit the front cover. This engine is good to work on because everything fits very well indeed. And believe me, this is not always the case. Some of the steam engines I work on are unfortunately not very well made. I wonder if the pump's going to run. Well, as usual, it runs on compressed air, but I can detect a slight blow. I really do think that the original shuttle piston, which is made from brass, is actually bent. Only very slightly from the looks of it, but it's just enough to make it lock up when the whole thing gets hot. The original plan was to give it another steam test at the end of this video, but it's so cold in the workshop at the moment, the gas is too cold and I can't get much of a flame on the burner. But I think I'm going to make a new shuttle piston anyway from stainless steel. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.